I'm Lima Milan. In this video, we're going to look at external hardware and MIDI CC workflows. So this is all about when we're using gear that's external to our software environment. And MIDI CC is a data protocol which is tied to the original MIDI implementation, which is MIDI 1.0. And CC stands for Controller Change or Continuous Controller. And that's a data type that we can use to control different parameters on external hardware devices. In order for us to use our MIDI CC data, there's a couple of different workflows we can use to, to implement it within Ableton Live. The first one is a programming method where we'll use the software to send out the MIDI CC data to, in this case, our synthesizer, our external hardware. And then that will listen to the data and move its parameters based on our programming. The other option is that we use the actual controls on the hardware and we capture their movement using MIDI CC into the software and then the software is has the programming recorded into there and plays it back to the instrument so on playback you also get the same movement of parameters as you did as you tracked and recorded going in and then the third workflow that we can go for is that we're going to use a midi controller and set it up to send out the correct midi cc data to a hardware instrument as well. So they all have their reasons, which I'll explain as we go through, but that's the three main workflows we're gonna focus on. So first, let's have a look at our setup. So we've got a MIDI track, which is currently um, set up to, to not go to anything. I've got a MIDI clip already programmed in there and it's running through an arpeggiator. So there's some notes like a melody line that's gonna be used, but the actual MIDI two at the moment isn't going anywhere. So the first thing I'll need to do is just configure that. So I go to configure, which then brings us to our MIDI tab within preferences. And you can see the boutique instrument here shows there's an input and an output. And because we're programming, so we're sending data from the software to the hardware, we just need to enable the track output which goes to the boutique. Now the, the boutique is actually set up so it's using USB, which is what we call bi-directional. So MIDI can go from the computer to the hardware, but MIDI can also leave the hardware and go back to the computer on one connection. Some hardware that you use that uses MIDI 1.0 will use what we call five pin DIN MIDI connections. And this is the really old form of connections. The key difference with that is that you'll need to have a MIDI interface. So the data can leave or come into the computer via this five pin connection. And then you'll run one cable because this is unidirectional, which will send data out from the computer to the device. And then if you want to have the information leave the hardware device and go into the computer, you have a second five pin cable and you connect that and run that into your MIDI interface. So there's a lot more involved in your knowledge and your uh, intentional application of setting it up when you're dealing with five pin MIDI. With USB, it's a little bit easier because it shows with the right name in the software and it's a bit easier to send to and from down one cable. So I'm sending out uh, from the track to the boutique in this setup for programming. Let's have a look at uh, the routing. So let's send that to the boutique now. Now I already know that this device uses uh, channel one out of 16 channels that can be used in MIDI. So we're gonna automatically have the sound coming through. And then I'm gonna just set up the audio here to go from inputs one and two, which is where the boutique is coming through and just set that to monitor in for now. We're not gonna record the actual audio today, we're just gonna run it as a real-time event because we're focusing on the MIDI CC side of this. Now let's have a look at how MIDI CC data can be generated from Ableton to go to the hardware. So if I go to my uh, MIDI clip and I bring up the envelope view here, Envelopes can control uh, parameters of software devices within Ableton Live, but they can also be used to create uh, MIDI CC data. So I'm gonna to go to MIDI control, and then we can see a big list of MIDI CC numbers. Now, uh, there's 128 numbers altogether, and up until 119 are all available to use for programming and controlling parameters within an instrument. 120 onwards are reserved for some very uh, specific uh, alterations you can make to the behavior of an instrument. So you're not allowed these within the editor just to be safe that you don't accidentally change the, the system behavior of your hardware. So I'm gonna go for the most generic MIDI CC number, which is number one, which is basically a standard that's across most hardware that's out there. It's the same as moving the modulation wheel on a synthesizer. So in most cases, that will be the vibrato depth. It will control how much vibrato there's on the sound. 
Um, so I brought that uh, envelope up. If I just hit play, you'll hear the sound as it runs now. And just as you've done with automation before when you're working with envelopes, you can use a pencil tool or you can put anchor points in and just uh, have it change the parameters. So we should hear it go up to uh, deep vibrato and then back off to no vibrato again. So a simple demonstration, not very musical, so we can do clear envelope and just get rid of that. And then the modulation will be at whatever the last position of the modulation data was. This is something to watch out for with using MIDI 1.0. It's not self-aware, so it's only as good as the last bit of data you've sent to a device. Um, so let's have a listen to where the, the ending state was. It should be that it's back to zero because that was the last thing that was played. Yeah. All right, so let's have a look at MIDI implementation. Now, almost all hardware will come with a manual and that manual will also come with a MIDI implementation chart. And that's something to watch out for, that literal termination, MIDI implementation, usually towards the back end of a main manual, or in this case, I have the MIDI implementation chart document for this device, and that's all it refers to. So it's the first thing you find when you go to it. So MIDI implementation, controller change here, CC. You've got the number that you select, and then what it is you'll be altering on the instrument too. So it's always good to go for the most obvious things first. So let's go for a filter sweep. So I'm going to look for voltage controlled filter frequency. The terminology does differ a lot with this. So don't worry too much if it doesn't necessarily fully make sense to you. It's mainly the CC number you want to know and what it's actually controlling um, on the right hand side in this case. So I'm going to go over to live and then I'm going to go to number 74 this time and select that. And let's just highlight all of that. And we'll go for a shape this time. So let's go in for a sign. Now I'm just going to skew that a little bit because the filter was so low and it's quite a high registered sound that we, we lost the actual sound completely once it got so far. So I'm just changing that range. Okay, so think about the things you'd normally want to change when you're working with a synthesizer when it's software. So I'm going to go for envelope and release and just tighten the sound up when it gets brighter and then maybe let it be more elongated and have a longer decay when it is more filtered. So that's CC72. So let's go to CC72 and add that on top. So we said when it's brighter, it was going to go one way. In fact, what we can do in this instance is just copy our envelope, go to 72, paste our envelope here. use that as a reference point to pull this up and have this do a slightly different shape. It's not necessarily going to be the same contour that we're going for here. Let's pull that down. And then we wanted it so it was higher during the fil more filtered section, as in the higher release. So if we just hold Alt and curve that a little bit, that might work. Let's give that a go. Okay, it's great crescendo there that's coming through from that. So that's programming. That's as far as that goes. So the next stage was to go for capture. So the first stage of capture that I'm going to show you is making use of this bi-directional behavior of the USB connection on this device. Again, if you've got five pin connections that you're having to deal with, you have to have the out of the hardware at least running to the MIDI interface for your computer so the data can leave the hardware and go into Ableton Live for capture. Um, you would need still the other five pin connection because you still need to feed the notes to the hardware in order for it to play too. So you'd need both connections so the data can run in both both uh, yeah, directions. So let's go to clearing 
the fact that we don't need to clear all these envelopes. Let's, let's just explore the device and find a parameter on the device that we like. Okay, I like that. So one thing we need to do is make sure that the MIDI data, so I'm just gonna do command and comma and bring up the preferences again. Make sure that the MIDI data can come in from the uh, hardware device. So I'm enabling track in now for the boutique device. And we have a MIDI data confirmation that it's coming in up here. So that's coming through. I'm just making sure there's not a loop of the data there. I was just turning monitor off so it's not passing the MIDI in data that I'm sending in right back out to the output at the same time. So let's uh, try and capture that. So it's a similar principle. In fact, what I'm going to do before we do that is let's just duplicate the length of this idea to eight bars so we can record a, a longer pass. So I'm in session view, so I need to make sure automation can be recorded. And I'm going to use the session view record button and record that motion. Uh, I'll probably let it pass once or at least let it come back around to the beginning. Uh, I could actually get around this thinking about it by doing a pre-count. So let's give a pre-count of a bar before it comes in. So if we go to the editor here, when, you, when we're looking at the MIDI editor, by the way, um, the, the, the clip view and being able to see the MIDI CC data, you have a little dot, just like with automation, to say that there is some automation recorded. So I could see that between the two MIDI CC numbers I'd used to program this, that there was another one that's been added, which is the one that we just recorded in there. Uh, one quick thing to note, though, especially with these retro orientated um, pieces of hardware or analog orientated pieces of hardware, not all of them will have the MIDI features. This one does, this outputs MIDI CC when you move its parameters, so it's great for this demonstration, but quite a lot of these analog only based hardware devices might have analog controls for all the parameters, but they're about a performance where you capture the audio of that. It's not about being able to capture the movement of those parameters as MIDI data. That's, that's a separate part of uh, the workflow. So for this instance, this is great. This is technically a MIDI controller as well as a piece of hardware. So that's MIDI CC for programming and then MIDI CC for capture. And in this case, from the hardware that also outputs MIDI data. So that the third instance of the workflow is gonna be that we use another MIDI controller uh, to be able to control the MIDI data within the hardware as well. So we're, we're Fairly limited with how many MIDI CCs this particular controller can output, depending on what type of MIDI controller you have. You can program uh, what the modulation will output and make it, like we did from the drop-down menu, choose which destination, which MIDI CC it will use. In this case, by default at least, we're using modulation, so it's MIDI CC1, as I demonstrated earlier. So in this case, I'm going to be able to capture myself moving the modulation uh, data as this um, idea gets recorded with that data on top. So let me just uh, clarify another aspect of the setup that you need to be aware of. It's not about the track in from the boutique hardware now, it's about the track in from the MIDI controller. Now it is already enabled, but I wanna make sure you know how to enable this if it doesn't work for you. It's not the other options for MIDI, they only need ticking for other circumstances. We're just on about adding MIDI data to a track or sending it from a track. So enable track, for the input of the key step. And then let's do the same again and track a modulation wheel movement on a separate controller. to modulation there. It's not very sonically obvious because of all the filtering we've done. We can't really hear the vibrato of the harmonics of the sound. Um, but at a certain point, just towards the end, 
we got confirmation that the modulation was being uh, applied because we could hear it just as the sound came out the filter sweep and then uh, moved over be able to hear it in uh, a clear form and hear the modulation at the same time. So this is all to do with MIDI CC in the clip view. Now one aspect of this is if we have this inside our arrangement view, ordinarily we're probably used to seeing automation lanes in the MIDI editor. In this case we're still dealing with the MIDI CCs in the clips in arrangement view. So same data Okay, so the same data going in, but if I clear all the envelopes, there's, a, there's another approach to doing this, which can be uh, a bit more useful for what we're going for. So I'm just going to kind of reset this um, back to a sound that's, that works. Okay, so I've got the timbre the way I'd like it. Let's go for something that I've downloaded from online. So it was a purchased one. In this case, sometimes they're, they're, they can be free um, to use. And what it is, is it's a Max for Live device. So it's in my user library. And this Max for, for Live device is basically something that someone's prepared that sends out the correct MIDI CC data. But in terms of our workflow, it gives us a front end, which is way more familiar in terms of being automatable parameters. So we can move them manually, but we can also show them on automation lanes. So this is very useful if you want to have that more uh, Ableton Live or VST plugin workflow of being able to change parameters rather than the MIDI CC as your front end. So I can program the sound in from here. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, we can let's have a look at what it was I last used. Let's go for that LFO depth. It could be that that increases over time with my MIDI clip. In this video, we've had a look at external hardware and MIDI CC data workflows. First, we looked at it from a programming perspective where the software dictates the hardware's parameter movements. Then we looked at two different methods of using MIDI CC data, leaving either the hardware, its MIDI output, or the MIDI controller's MIDI output, and then being captured into your MIDI clips within Ableton Live. The final workflow we added to this was the ability to use Max for Live devices to be able to have that more native parameter automation system that we're used to when we're working especially with tracks in arrangement view.